And then I want to, before we start on a verse, I want to say a few words about reading, reading books. <laughs> and about, I think, the realization that we're all having when we're reading Bhagavad Gita, at least I hope we're having, that's that we, we jivas, we souls, have a way of standing in the way of love. Our problem, our challenge, is that we get in the way of love ourselves. That our our ego, if you like, gets in the way of love. Love wants to come. Love, our hearts are full of love. And we even want on one level to let it out, but we block it. So... Maybe a basic realization that we have when we're trying to find love in, in books like Bhagavad Gita is to get out of the way. We're standing in the way. So do what we have to do to get out of the way for love. And I'm really convinced, and I guess it's uh, my job, my seva, is to convince you that Bhagavad Gita is full of love that it's a book about love, that it's an introduction to bhakti. It's an introduction to loving devotion. So when we read Bhagavad Gita, we need to get out of the way of that message. Don't let our egos, our desires, our intellects stand in the way of that, that living, loving bhav that's in the text of Bhagavad Gita. That's really the, the challenge, the, the purpose of this, of this class. And one way, maybe the main way we do that, is to read with humility. That's why I start by saying that I ask, to, I pray to you for humility. To not think I know what the book means, but to let what it means come to me. Let it be a, a, an act of mercy. That the meaning of Bhagavad Gita be merciful. Not that I go and take it with my brain, with my willpower, with my concentration. Um, but that somehow it comes, comes to us, comes to me, comes to you when, when, you, when, you, when we're reading. So Bhagavad Gita, like all our favorite books, are... are our sacred books, we need to take special, special care to lower our egos, open our hearts, erase ourselves, let the, let the love come out of them and not make it come from us. Be just the vehicle, be the mouthpiece, be the pipe through which that love comes. That's our jobs as, as readers. So we, we're here to let the love come out of Bhagavad Gita. It doesn't come from us, this love. We're not the origin of the love. We're not the goal of the love. We're just part of the flow of the love. The origin of the love is Radharani. The goal of the love is Radharani, or we'd say Radha Mohan maybe. And we're there to serve the purpose of making this love flow from A to Z, from Alpha to Omega. That is our seva. And we do it, the seva for Gurudev, and through Gurudev we do it for Radharani. So maybe we can think of reading as a, a kind of bhajan, or this class is a kind of bhajan. To a way of making the heart work, uh, a way of finding the non-intellectual things, the non-logical things in the book. So looking for the beauty of the text, looking for the poetry in the book, looking for um, the music in the words, letting it flow, letting it circulate, and passing it on, this love. I've been thinking about language, too, this week since we last talked. 
and I realized something very special. I think I realized it. I asked a few devotees. It seems to me that in Vilapa Kusmanjari, in the Radha Rasa Sudhaniti and other books, Radha and Mohan never speak to each other. There's never any dialogue between Radha and Mohan. There's words between Radha and the maidservants. There's words between Mohan and the, and the gopis. There's words from um, Saraswati or Raghunath uh, Das Babaji, Das Goswami, pardon me. There are lots of words all around describing and picturing and giving us images and feelings. But there's no language, verbal language, in the loving relation. And this is because language is a material covering. Language itself is marginal energy. Speaking and sharing and communicating is so important for us. But in the end, we're trying to find our way to something that's beyond language. So the spiritual level is a place where there is not language. Language is something that covers us. And we can easily use language to cover up the truth. We know this. To distract ourselves, to tell stories that are not true, to, to tell stories that hurt and do not uh, foster love. Language is material energy, marginal energy. Language is not truth. It's a covering of truth. It can help to bring truth, but it's not truth itself. So language should not be the goal. Talking should not be the goal. Mm. Language is not honesty, but it can help us to be honest in our souls. And language is not, um, what do you say, sincerity, but it can help us to be sincere, to bring out sincerity. Words cannot be the, the goal. In the loving relation, at least in the in the in the kunj lilas that we read, language is not there to get in the way. There's only gestures and glances and caresses and touches and all sorts of non-verbal ways of loving. And these are more pure and more even transcendental than the language that we use in everyday life. Last time, last time we we looked at verses thirty and thirty-one. And we talked about morality, mostly about morality. And we found that a fully engaged devotee cannot do evil cannot do immoral deeds. The verse said a lot about devotion, that morality in its usual forms is an external code, is an external force. Morality comes from laws and judges and policemen. <laughs> and all sorts of actors with whom we do not have a relation. And in some religions, in the Abrahamic religions, Christianity of the Old Testament, Judaism, Islam, there's also law, but this law comes from a silent God, a God with whom we don't have a relation. If we are pure in our hearts, then our hearts are naturally and purely moral. This is what, this is the conclusion that Prabhupada drew from the long uh, discussion about morality. So it's not a question what is moral or not moral, according to Prabhupada. It's a question of how goodness looks in the Swarup, in, the, in our constitutional position, what form our goodness takes. And the form our goodness takes is our Swarup. There. Hello again, everyone. I think we're okay. So the last, the last thing we talked about that I want to remind you from last time was righteousness. 
And Prabhupada asked, what does righteousness mean? And usually in uh, external language, we talk about righteousness as, as being morally good, following the moral law. But righteousness for Prabhupada, righteousness in bhakti means realizing the divine and realizing the divine love within. Someone who's righteous in bhakti is someone who is sincere and clear and honest and pure toward uh, her or his heart. Someone who's righteous is someone who um, surrenders. Surrenders to the heart, surrenders to the divine, surrenders to what is right inside the heart. So if you like, the, the challenge is not to become a, a good devotee, the challenge is to become a pure devotee. That a pure devotee can only be good. Once one has taken the step of surrendering, opening the heart, aspiring to purity in the heart, one can only be good. Nothing else is possible. Now we continue today, if you like, with <clears throat> verse 9, 3, 2. which I repeated just before we started, but some of you have joined already. I'll take the, I think I'll take the Sanskrit this time first. Mam hi parta vyaprashitya ye pisyu papa yonayaha striyo vasya stata sudras tipiyanti paramgati. And Prabhupada translates, O son of Priti, Prita, those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, Vaishyas, merchants, as well as Sudras, workers, can approach the supreme destination. Again, O son of Prita, those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, Vaisyas, as well as Sudras, can approach the supreme destination. Now we must take the, the word women in the historical context uh, here and remember that there was a different idea of what's the place of women in society than we have today. But that aside, we can just identify some very key words in the verse. And the first one is, of course, shelter. And then the second one that we want to look at and talk about is the supreme destination. So we want to ask many things, but we want to ask about what shelter is and what the supreme destination is. I think this verse takes us back to the question of morality somehow. Or sorry, not the question of morality, but the week before we talked about does Krishna discriminate? Does, does he prefer some jivas to others? Does he prefer devotees to others? That was a question we had a long discussion about. And we decided that externally, from the, the point of view of Paramatra, Paramatma, Krishna does, he indeed does discriminate, but internally, he does not discriminate between any beings who have love in their heart. Any individual who has the slightest trace of loving devotion, slightest trace of love, the slightest trace of emotion or feeling is a devotee and belongs 
to the status of devotee for 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 Krishna. In Bhagavatam, there's a citation by Chakravarti Takura, who says, any person whose tongue has chanted your name even once is most worshipable. Worshipable. So if only we've chanted Krishna, the word Krishna, once in all our lives, we've shown the very first step towards the very first chapter of a life of devotion. We've shown that we have love. All we have to have is that one tiny trace which shows that there's a path to love in our hearts, a path to divine love in our hearts. It's the seed of love. Bhagavad Gita often talks about the seed of love. Just the ability to chant one word is enough for us to feel that, to know that there's a way for, to divine love. The path is open. It's the door to the bigger heart and inside us. It's the unlocking of the door. Sometimes Gurudev talks about the key to unlock the door. Just one sense of emotion. If you've seen a smile, if you've had butterflies in your stomach, if you've felt beauty, if you've heard a note of music, a kirtan that moved you just a little bit, you're already on the way to divine love. That's all we need to know. And the rest is just, like we said before, getting out of the way. Realizing that we have that love. Realizing fully how big that love is and letting ourselves go to it. So the divine love is already there. We know this because God speaks through it. This is also said in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna speaks through our hearts. We don't hear it like a burning bush in the Old Testament of Christian Bible. It's not outside us, this voice of God. It's coming to us from inside us. This is where God speaks. And it doesn't speak from a cold and sterile and dead heart or soul. It speaks through the love in our hearts. When we hear the voice of God, we're hearing it through our heart. So let's get out of the way, uncover it, unlock it. Realize it. That's our path. The little spark of love. Mm, let's say the little spark of love will light the fire of prema. Our, our hearts are full of dry, small wood, tinder, ready to burn. Just bring the fire to it, and the fire will burn brightly inside us. So this is another way that to say that Devotion is for everybody, to get back to the verse. Is it, for, is it for the working men? Is it for the bureaucrats? Is it for this person or that person? Yes, it's for everyone, says Krishna. It's a, popular, it's a populist practice. You don't need a temple. You don't need a book. You don't need a paraphernalia or candles. You certainly don't need a pundit. All you need is to see the little light of, of love in your heart and then focus on realizing how big that is inside you. Any time, any place, any circumstances, devotion can be practiced like this. So what does Prabhupada say? Well, Prabhupada says the following. It's clearly declared here by the Supreme Lord, that in devotional service, there is no distinction between the lower or higher classes of people. Why? Because, says Prabhupada, only in the material conception of the world, of life, sorry, are there such divisions. Of course, these are material divisions. They're not spiritual divisions. Prabhupada says, but for a person engaged in transcendental devotional service to the Lord, they are not. 
So class and caste do not exist in spiritual worlds. These are material divisions. They're material inventions. They're ways of organizing material society. There is only one qualification, and that is openness of the heart. Desire. Not even strong desire, just a little desire. The only qualification, if you like, is just to see that love is somehow inside us and that it can become the universal platform. Since love is the constitutional position, it's the starting point for everything. Everything is built upon it. And Prabhupada goes on saying, everyone is eligible for the supreme destination. It's so radical. It's so revolutionary. You can see why Gandhi got in so much trouble in his time. Everyone is equally eligible to go to God, to Godhead. Everyone is eligible for the supreme destination, which is realization of divine love. That's the supreme destination. Realization of supreme love and the calling to support supreme, supreme love as, as, uh, as Manjari in relation to Radha Mohan, serving Radharani's mission of love. Prabhupada goes on to say, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that even the lowest who are called kandalas, dog eaters, even these can be elevated. Thank you, chandalas, of course, chandalas. Even those who are called chandalas can be elevated by association with a pure devotee, says Prabhupada. So this is very important because it brings in not only another devotee, another individual, but a pure devotee. So it tells us, Prabhupada tells us that we need association. We need to be together with other devotees, other devotees who also have a sense of their heart, have a sense that they have a heart, that that heart is the light, the start of a path to pure love. So the experience of love, to, to share love with another, to hear about love from another, to watch the behavior of someone who has love, this is the only requirement, says, says Prabhupada, in order to rise up towards supreme, supreme, the supreme destination, which is, which is uh, loving devotion. Prabhupada continues. Therefore, devotional service and guidance of a pure devotee are so strong that there is no discrimination between lower and higher classes of men. Anyone can take to it. So once again, from a spiritual point of view, the point of view of a pure devotee, a pure devotee looks at the world and sees souls. A pure devotee does not look at the world and see class and caste. He doesn't see material birth, doesn't see possession or richness or work or, or tasks in everyday life. A pure devotee looks at the world and sees souls. Just like Radharani looks at the world and sees Krishna, the object of her love. Just like anyone who has love looks at the world and sees the object of the love, nothing but the object of the love. If we love our husband, we look at the world and we see our husband. We love Guru, we look everywhere in the world, every corner in everyone's eyes, and we see Guru. That is what a pure devotee sees. Only souls. Well, 
Prabhupada continues. The most simple man taking the center of the pure devotee he can be purified by proper guidance. So once ordinary people, once ordinary people have access to to devotees who have experience of, of love in lower or higher forms, then these can help guide us along the way. These can be, as Gurudev says, navigators. And the ideal, the model navigator is Guru. Please don't be shy, everybody, about interrupting or sharing or questioning. Prabhupada continues then, according to the different modes of material nature, men are classified in the mode of goodness, brahmanas, the mode of passion, Satriyas, and that's administrators, the mixed modes of passion and ignorance, Vaishya merchants, and the mode of ignorance, Shudras workers. These are basically corresponding to the three gunas, these modes of material nature. I don't want to repeat too much, but again, these are material classifications. They belong to the gunas. They're created materially. They're lived out materially. They're passed along materially from friend to friend, from boss to employee, from, from non-spiritual family members to non-spiritual family members, all in material circumstances. They're all wealth, and social position. I give you my car, you have a car, I have no car, but I transmit nothing of, of the blessing of, of spiritual um, realization. But this does not apply to devotees. How do we transmit devotional awareness? Not by giving money in the hands, not by giving car keys, not by giving a job, at the, at the factory or a job at the office. No. Devotees transmit their mm, richness through association. By being with others, by expressing love through the different forms, through song, through dance, through, through seva, through prasad. These are all the ways of transmitting soul and love for the devotees. So not only are the material natures completely different for, for non-spiritual individuals and spiritual individuals, but the way we communicate, the way we transmit this nature from one to the other is on a different plane, a different kind, different level. And Prabhupada goes on to say, these lower than them are called chandalas, lower than the three material positions. The chandalas are born in sinful families, says Prabhupada. Generally, those who are born in sinful families are not accepted by the higher classes. But the process of devotional service and the pure devotee of the Supreme God are so strong that all the lower classes can attain the highest perfection of life. It's a remarkable sentence and a remarkable statement from Bhagavad. Even though all the power of transmission of material material relations is there, 
the process of devotional service is even stronger. So all the material power we could have of wealth and physical power and even violence, all these are so strong and they organize our social relations. But devotional service is stronger, says Prabhupada. Loving devotion transcends all and can bring people from the lowest levels of material existence to the very highest levels of spiritual existence. It's miraculous. It's remarkable. Just think when confronted with violence in the world, if we respond with love and a smile, the violent person is completely disabled. The violence has no currency. The violence doesn't work. In the end, devotional service, devotional love has an immense power just by its purity and by its, um, by its uh, application. Um, Prabhupada goes on. This is possible. This movement from the lower um, uh, material level to the high spiritual level. This is possible only when one takes center of Krishna. Only when one takes center of Krishna. When one focuses perfectly, singularly on Krishna. One pointed, as Gurudev, Gurudev says. One has to take center, says Prabhupada, completely of Krishna. Then one can become much greater than great jnanis and yogis. So now we're even going a step higher. Before Prabhupada was talking about three different social classes, the, the chandalas, the workers, the administrators, and, and others. And now he's even talking about those who have some level of spiritual development. Jnanis, those who seek philosophical knowledge of the Absolute. And yogis, those who, those who seek the Absolute through um, carrying out, uh, carrying out uh, certain practices. All of these can be surpassed by bhakti, by devotional service. So this is the Uttamati explanation is so sweet and uh, full of love. Now I feel one has to take center completely of Krishna. It means we can transcend transcend of the three world material nature. So here Prabhupada said one can become much greater than great jnani and yogi. Because this jnani is philosophy. They are using material mind. And the yogi means they are seeking after uh, spiritual, some kind of mystery. Mystic power. Wow. Oh. I was thirsty. Wow. He surely saw I was thirsty. Wow. She knows the heart. Of it. So, this Gyani and Yogi, there's still material contamination there. So, Gurudev is saying, like, uh, so we are looking for information. Looking for information is kind of uh, using material mind. So means uh, we are not completely, uh, we, we, we cannot take center completely to Krishna. Yogi also, they are thinking kind of mystic power, some or other. So they are not completely free from uh, uh, guna. They are mixed. Yeah, mixing. Yeah. So therefore, this pure devotee, uh, who is free from guna? Uh, 
Shuddha Sattva or Vishuddha Sattva. Prabhupada said, Greater than great Gyani and Yogi. Someone who is mixing material, material uh, mode of nature. Because sometimes you would say, uh, thing is spiritual and material mixing. Yes. So means uh, if we mix this material thing, uh, usually we say like uh, karma means a kind of profit. And jnana means a kind of own benefit, own liberation. This also yogi kind of mystic power, my power. I can control somebody very, or something. Very interesting. Yes, this is kind of, you know, kind of selfish desire, including. So you mentioned ego means, uh, ego means self center, kind of love ourselves. You say like love is not to center us and love God. Love or uh, love, love personified. Yeah. So this is very powerful, interesting. So, so this Gyani Yogi is a kind of mixing uh, uh, guna or some kind of tinge of some some kind of uh, mixing. This is the kind of I feel now. You know, after very good. your your lecture, yes. your sharing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, written here about the law girls, women, righteous, and so on. Uh, I remember one uh, example from Shri Thomas about Haridas Hatha. Once one prostitute came to him to make him fall down. But what's happened, what, what happened with her after this? She became sadhu. Accepted but also cited as a son, just by association with son. Mm. And also, it's for me very remarkable the end of this verse can approach the supreme destination, not the supreme destination. But, but we have many, many goals. We just uh, listening, uh, was listening, uh, Gauravani's Shtanshitamrita. It's called Ramanda Rai Sambat, Madhya Lila, Chapter A. Different goals. And what is the best? What is the highest? Which is possible for Jewels? So it's the Shimati Radhika. Anyone can receive it. That's the message. It's not depend on position of intellect, intellect, position in society, because the prostitutes came to. Uh, and the Sakura was low in position in society, but she received it. So today, morning class, we are reading Radha Rasa Sramiti, verse 95. And then Anandas Baba describes four goals of life, uh, no, six goals of life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, so usually material goal is for uh, dharma, religiosity, arta is uh, economical development, and karma is sense gratification, mm -hmm. and moksha is liberation. So after that, uh, Krishna prema, like loving service of Krishna. And then another Baba said, even more higher than Krishna's Prema, Krishna's Seva, is Radha, Radha Rani Seva. We may say, mm -hmm. you know, like, la means, uh, we usually say, like, uh, made servant of Radha. Mm -hmm. So this is, this, this, this Prabhupada or this Krishna did not mention the, Supreme destination. But uh, no, this Paranga thing. He, he did not mention what is Paranga. But uh, if we read Radharasas Daniti and uh, 
and uh, Virapak Samandari. Love is a way. Love is a goal. Who is love personified? Personification. And Shurimate Radharani. Radharani. So the service of Shurimate Radharani, service of love. And this is, say, we, we understand if we read this scripture, service of Radharani, service of love. Is the supreme destination. So anyone can attend. This is this is a gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is not mentioned, but this is amazing. This is indirectly said. Everybody can participate in this loving devotion service. Also, everybody could go to supreme destination. This is really amazing mm. because in 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 this material platform. It depends on the money, it depends on the bus, depends on father, mother's position. Mm -hmm. You know, this is we we understand to some extent. So if uh, if someone who born in in rich family or very uh, uh, or like uh, very high positions, you know, son or daughter, or like a famous person, the son and daughter, it's more easy to get to material position. But uh, this Krishna said, it doesn't matter material wealth, material position, you know, material anything. So this is uh, for for us, like a uh, supreme, like a, uh, what do you say? Mm. Uh, like a bene, like a benediction. Yeah. <coughs> um. What is righteous and what is not, what is good, what is bad, how person can discriminate from where person receiving the data, capacity to discriminate one state of consciousness from other state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's called education. What does mean education? Education is this big and in the stream of feelings which is coming from the highest world because. What is uh, what is the goal? Goal is defined defined what is good, what is bad. According to goal, we can understand what is good, what is bad. What is the goal? But now uh, Jaram just uh, explained morning morning our discussions so we did about six or seven goals. Okay. If someone accepted the seven goals, so it's the Shimati Radhika, then according to his goal, he will not all have cut five, the good. Even Harikatha, not all Harikatha are good. What is good, what is bad? And this education will be in the stream. In this moment, it's not important who you are, who are you? Uh, low girl, woman, Vaisha, or Shudras. According to Shastra, Allah Shudras, Sambhava, everyone who took birth in Kalinga, all Shudras, means without education, they could not reach the goal. Mm. Means without education means without be in this stream of feelings and how they will they talk. This stream not only feelings, this stream of spurtus. Each spurt changes its today is our under our Each spurt changes completely our life. Mm. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Education, but only we must be very clear, not education in a <clears throat> modern sense of the word education. Yes, I thought about modern. Yeah. Not, uh, not information, not knowledge of uh, books and logics, but spiritual. In our goal is love. The way must be built is love. Means every step must contain love. Mm -hmm. Very nice. One last word about this moving up in class. There's even a comment by Bhakti Vinod Takura, who says that from a certain point of view, those who are born, born lower have advantages over those born higher because they learn humility. Oh, yes. And this is a very important lesson for Bhakti, for the process of spiritual uh, evolution. The, if I turn on your microphone, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm.
प्लीज the sentence in the end or the two sentences that really touch my heart because i feel our our trimati radhika this is only possible when one takes center of krishna or one has to take center completely of krishna ah. so that's her right because she is krishna mai she is krishna consciousness in person ah. and therefore that is again she is the only way how to to transcend our material uh, identifications and how to to come to this you know transcendental platforms and the wow. uh, prabhupad again makes it uh, very clear and we can also understand i was just like this verse is reminding me so much because when lord chaitanya comes and he is telling us i am not a vaishya i am not a brahmana i am not a shudra you know who am i i'm the dasi and the dasi and the dasi of the dasi or you know das and das of the gopis so that is like the complementary you know how do you say Absolutely. uh uh, uh statement yes. Yes. yes and it does and and then if we think that uh, lord chaitanya is shrimati ratika who is you know having krishna as a student in the heart so to say Very if we want to see it from a rasika perspective then she is the one who is uh, destroying all these material identifications and krishna here in this most confidential knowledge you know chat the most confidential yeah. means who am i yeah. no? am i this you know born this body made out of elements am i what i think what kind of education or birth i have yeah. no i i can uh, transcend this if i take completely center of krishna and that's why krishna also says mami kam sharanam take shelter of my yeah. one because yeah. she is completely centered on me and she is my center yes. so i just want to yeah. so, you know i go to some inspiration you mentioned one has to take center completely of krishna this krishna my and if and then another thing one has to take center of krishna so like uh, completely is like uh, radharani not completely is maybe gopi so maybe center krishna but some some tinge of some kind of can say like a sanchari nature go and this but uh, radharani case completely you know 100% but if little bit say deviate then we may go you know sanchari so this case in you know, krishna so therefore you know is not radha is not there but uh, you know if completely 100% and say this is you know 95% or 90% they have some kind of some selfish desire yeah. so then sanchari you know the kind of moving or oh, this way this way especially we say we go sometimes material platform and then next time we go spiritual platform or well, even spiritual platform sometimes soul consciousness or swarpa consciousness you know like a gopi consciousness mm-hmm. or like a, you know manjari complete stai baba mm-hmm. this is you know after hearing suniti this yeah. this completely is very very important because if someone accepting krishna but not accepting shrimati radhika it's not complete yeah, wow this is true because krishna means including radha actually because krishna is usually shri krishna you know and what does mean shri krishna shri first <laughs> yeah the mean the mean is the shri so radha is first krishna you know energy coming first then krishna actually 
クリシュリクリシナミンズ、えの、クリシナミンズアクシャリー、フーリー、フルクリシナイズ、With, with Radha. With, with Radha. And only Krishna is not, not fully.、Uh, this is our Gaudiya Vaishnava's understanding. So, this is Radha Charampa will give you a very nice point. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not qualified, but I feel that、uh, if someone has to take center completely of Krishna, completely Krishna, automatically sits,、uh, this one understand or radica. Rade, rade. Thank you. Anyone else on this?、Uh, I mean, just that, I told what I told you. But discrimination coming by that. If someone has test, means ruchi, which is a、uh, manifestation of love in the heart, then he can discriminate. Is this tasty? Is this not tasty? I not go away because no ruchi, no prima way. I will go only this way. He can very easily discriminate what is bad, what is good. Oh、Inter- internally. Yeah. Oh my God. Usually, you know, usually Viveka means kind of using kind of intelligence.、Mm. But、uh, Radha Champa s a y no, Viveka loving, we using love. This is kind of, you know, Raga Bhakti. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah Raga Bhakti, Vivek. Oh my God. Luchi. Oh my God. This is a very sweet explanation. Rashka. Rashka. Oh my God. Um, Prabhupada did not <clears throat> talk about, doesn't comment on shelter in the, in the verse. Those who take shelter in me, says Krishna. So maybe finish and ask just a simple question about what shelter is, what that shelter means. We use the term very often, but sometimes it's not so clear. What are we sheltering from? From like a rainstorm or from an enemy, from the bullets of an enemy, maybe, or bombs from an enemy, or are we protecting ourselves from ideas that we don't want to hear, or sounds we don't want to hear, or things we don't want to see? It's very strange the way we use the word shelter, but it's very, very、um, important. It means Shelter from something in our own hearts. When we take shelter of Guru, for example, we go there in order to find safety from the ignorance in our own hearts. So we have a kind of place where we can surrender, where we can let go, refine ourselves,、uh, a space where we can become, let our hearts、uh, grow. This is what shelter has to mean a place for. Becoming ourselves, returning to our constitutional selves, being、um, sincere in, in our hearts, to feel our feelings, to feel our love, to be able to cry and to laugh, to be close to God. So it's, this, it's a space, but it's a space within us that Guru or whoever might shelter, Krishna or Radha, Radha Mohan, might shelter us. It's a place that lets our hearts be free. Not free to something external, not free to something material, but free to find its own self, find its constitutional position. Can I comment a little bit? Yes. So, this Vidyamaji has a very interesting. One has to take Sinta completely of Krishna, is one, one, one sentence. One has to take Sherita completely of Krishna. So, what is the difference center and shelter? This is my understanding like this. If we say center means ishta,、mm-hmm. our ishta deva, one yeah, one point ishta deva is Krishna. And then shelter, shelter means like kind of、uh, for our word, s u a r p a n i s h t a 
Who am I? What kind of relationship you have? If Krishna is shared to me, we are like a servant. Mm-hmm. Or if say, if like a, you know, like a kind of relationship. So like kind of center means like uh, some, uh, something uh, Ishta. And uh, shelter means something like uh, our relationship, especially for us, like uh, Swarupa Nishta. Who am I? This I feel, this, this is, you know. Because in, only in Swarupa, I can't visit protected from Maya. When I'm in Swarupa, no Maya. Because in uh, Rindown, no Maya. It's written. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, I read Shimad Bhattam here, but it's Krishna gave order to Yoga Maya to protect Rindown. Mm-hmm. Completely protect him down. No Mahamaya, no illusion, materialism in down. <laughs> it's been shelter. Yeah, this is very it's interesting, very you know. Interesting. Shelter and the center. Very in you know, a very similar, but uh, if we think about it a little bit, you know, meaning a little bit difficult, you know. Uh, I remember it's by Sri Dharmaraj or Bhagavad disciple, they explain or maybe Prabhupada of some sort of explain like this at the same. Center means Ishta Devata. Mm. Everything around of Ishta Devata, all life, mm. everything, all thoughts, all plants around only Ishta Devata. And Shatra will be Sarupa. Yeah. Very nice. Shelter. Shelter is a place where Svarupa can appear, can become stabilized. We mm. can come to it. Mm. Then we need the relation. Then we need relationship for this. With that relationship, we cannot do. How to share that? We cannot do that. Mm-hmm. And to whom, you know? Yes. Shelter is a relationship, fundamentally. Yes. A loving relationship to others. Mm-hmm. So there we end the verse 32, everybody. Last chance to comment. And I'm watching time, but we will go to verse 33 now. Yes, deeper. We go deeper again. Dive deep. Kim punara brahmananaha punya bhakta rajasarayas tata anityam asukam lokam imam prapya bhajaswamam. How much greater then are the Brahmanas, the righteous, the devotees, and saintly kings who in this temporary miserable world engage in loving service unto me. How much greater, then, are the brahmanas, the righteous, the devotees and saintly kings who in this temporary miserable world engage in loving service unto me? It's a message, isn't it, about (laughs) improbable, what I want to say, improbable spiritual progress. The world is so miserable. This temporary world is so miserable that it's nearly surprising, astonishing that we could make progress in this world. And therefore, it's much, it's even greater that we do make progress, spiritual progress. So, as we know, it's already miraculously unlikely that we should make spiritual progress at all. Is it Bhakti, Bhakti Binota Thakur who says somewhere, we're so fortunate to have become human souls, having risen from plants to lower animals, to higher animals, to, to humans, and already we're, we're very, very few who have come this far in spiritual evolution. And then to go the step farther, to find... Uh, evolution towards devotional, pure devotional service 
this is miraculously unlikely that a soul can arrive after such a long, long, long journey. And even more improbable coming from a, such a, a miserable world. So Prabhupada comments, in this material world, there are classifications of people. But after all, this world is not a happy place for anyone. Quite strong. Quite strong. This world is not a happy place for anyone. No matter what class or caste you are in, there is unhappiness all around. Prabhupada continues. It is clearly stated here, Anityam asukam lokam. This world is temporary and full of miseries, not habitable for any sane gentleman. Well, gentleman, I don't know, but not habitable for any civilized person. The world is unhappy, he says. And happiness, but happiness is available. Happiness is being offered. The world is temporary, but but uh, eternity is being offered as well. What then is the purpose of the highly evolved soul? It's the, a human being, a human soul. It's well, it's to take that final step, that long, that long final step towards spiritual uh, perfection. There is one purpose for the soul. There's one purpose for human beings to have a soul on the earth, and that is to discover who they are, to discover the truth about the soul. And that truth is that we are made and equipped for pra the practice of loving devotion, for enhancing, for building, for supporting loving devotion as Manjaris in the service of Radharani and the divine loving relation of Radha and Mohan. But it's up to us to discover this path with lots of help, of course, but it's up to us. Anyone who has the aptitude, the qualities for realization can meet the right associates, undertake the proper practices, and transcend. It's available to anyone who has the, the will and the, the desire. And Prabhupada continues, the world is declared by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be temporary and full of miseries. Some of the philosophers, especially the minor philosophers, say that this world is false. But we can understand from Bhagavad Gita that the world is not false, it is temporary. This is a very wise observation from Prabhupada, I think. The philosophers say the material world is false, the real world is just ideas, just ideas in, in our minds. But spiritual, advanced spiritual souls, the Bhagavad Gita understands that the world is not false, it's temporary, it's here for a reason. It's here for a purpose. It's here to welcome the appearance of Mahaprabhu. It's welcome, it's here to welcome the devotional activities, the seva of the jivas in the world who must, who must give devotional service to, to, um, to Radha Mohan. In a Christian understanding, it's all illusion. It's all false. And when we die, then we'll go to the true world. But for bhakti, the material world is real. It's part of the creation of Krishna. Krishna created the material world for a purpose. And the purpose is for us to develop our devotion, our devotional love, to have the experience of devotional love, to perfect our devotional love, to welcome Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who came to show us what devotional love means.
uh, Mahaprabhu goes on saying the following, there's a difference between temporary and false. The world is temporary, he says, but there is another world which is eternal. The world is miserable, but the other world is eternal and blissful. And then he continues saying, Arjuna was born in a saintly royal family. But to him also, the Lord says, take to my devotional service and come quickly bad, back to Godhead, back home. In other words, even Arjuna, for whom the world would be materially speaking as pleasant as possible, he's royalty, he's rich, he has everything he needs and wants. And yet, who does Krishna come to to address the message of Bhagavad Gita? To him who seems to have everything who is a prince, who seems to have everything. Arjuna, like the rest of us, has had a, a detour in material life, and his heart is evolving, his emotions are developing, his feelings are growing, and they grow throughout Bhagavad Gita, in fact. Arjuna undergoes a realization from chapter 1 to chapter 18. So the path for him to the insights of um, divine love grow shorter through this conversation with, with Krishna. Prabhupada goes on. No one should remain in this temporary world, full as it is with miseries. Everyone should attach himself to the bosom of the Supreme Personality of Godhead so that he can be eternally happy. And of course, the bosom is the bosom of Radharani, to which he should attach himself. Everyone should do so, says Prabhupada. And how is that done? Prabhupada continues through devotional service. By living out, expressing, Evolving our devotional, our, our capacity for devotional love through devotional service of the Supreme Lord. That's how we grow. That's how we evolve. And that's how we transcend this temporary world. Sorry, I, I, I quote directly now, Prabhupada. The, the devotional service of Supreme Lord is the only process by which all problems of classes of men can be solved. Everyone should therefore take to Krishna, Krishna consciousness, and make his life perfect. Oh, this is interesting. If someone who is Krishna, who is most Krishna consciousness, Radharani. So everyone should therefore take to Radhika, Radharani. And then make his life perfect. <laughs> then we finish chapter nine, verse thirty-three. We would be so happy to hear from Guru Dev. Gurudev, if you'd like to comment, you're more than welcome while we continue. Yes, sit there. This. I love it. Yeah. It's a connection very bad, Gurudev. I'm sorry. I hope you hear us better than we hear you. I heard him saying it's a wonderful sharing. 
Okay. <laughs> See, you can translate, Gopika. You're a translator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Radhe Radhe. Yes. I want to say something. He is a sequence, Brahmanas, righteous, devoted, saintly kings. And who is temporary uh, in this temporary miserable world engaged in non service? Devotees already been before. So Prabhupada, he's divided, devoted and few devoted. In love and service, it's Raga Bhakti. Because love is uh, Raja Bhumi is yes, yes. Uh, it's, Raj, it's Raga Bhakti. And devotee mm -hmm. means Vaidhi Bhakti. Wow. He is in, in line with Brahmanas, righteous, devotees, saintly kings. It's one sequence. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So already devotees who then go to the Aga Bhakti in loving service. Okay, do we want to continue? I think this this temporary king who is the contemporary middle of world and getting dubbing to me. This in that mentioned the Pandava Pandavas. Hmm. Because, because you know, this is a century king. Then who, who engaged in dubbing something? Yeah, like Arjuna. So, like indirectly saying, "Oh, you are, you are my dear, my friend, and also my devotee, and who has so much love." So this, I feel like this century king, if this is someone, someone who is in this temporary middle of the world engaged in dubbing such unto me, mm. they ordinary, you know, Dagabhata. But this century king, who is century king? In this situation, my my remembrance is like a Pandava, it's simply Arjuna. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, because Prabhupada mentioned it, no? Arjuna was born in the saintly royal family. Mm. He's coming in that commentary. Mm. Mm. Uh, I, I can add about uh, gentlemen. <laughs> Once two ladies came to Sri Prabhupada, the Tansani Prabhupada, mm -hmm. and inviting to an religious conference, he asked uh, what the purpose of this conference, and they Explain to him, oh, we invited all leaders of all religious organizations to make decisions how we can improve the world. And his answer was, this look like toilet. You can put so much perfumes, <laughs> but it's still will be toilet. Gentlemen, not stay in toilet. <laughs> 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 okay, I think we carry on with yes. with the the next verse, the last verse of chapter chapter nine, which starts with the most famous line in Bhagavad Gita, I think. Man mana bhava bad mada bhakto. Man, ba, man mana bhava mad bhakto. Which he's translating engage your mind always in thinking of me. Man mana bhava mad bhakto. Mad yaji mam namaskuru. Mam avaishya yuktvayvam 
atmanam mat parayanaha. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Offer obeisances and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. Just it makes me shiver. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Offer obeisances and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. So we have me in every line, mum. Mm. Me is in every line. It says that loving devotion is absorption. Loving a devotion is melting into the other, becoming part of the other. We hear so many times that we, our souls, are part and parcel of the Paramatma, of the super soul, of God's soul. And when we reach, when we reach realization, there's an absorption, a melting together of the two, realizing that we are part of God that we are already part of God, that our hearts are part of, of God, that the Radharani, that loving energy, is already within us, and all that is needed, and it's a big all, all that is needed is to realize, realization of that presence of loving energy in us. So the path, according to this verse, is to sink into our own God self. Soften to it. Become open to it. Merge our love with that, with Radharani's love. Make it so close to hers that we're the, we're the manjaris who are almost Radharani herself. We're so identical with her love, with her feelings, with her, with her emotions. And this happens through an, through an internal process, not a process with, with other, others outside of us, but with a growing within us to bring our internal soul consciousness to the place where we are close to that soul consciousness of Ramadanik. And that is what it means when Prabhupada says returning to the constitutional position, going back to Godhead. So this verse says absolutely everything about spiritual life. Everything we need to know, it's not very practical with guidance, but everything we need to know about where we are and where we are going in spiritual life. What does um, Prabhupada say then? He says, in this verse, it is clearly indicated that Krishna consciousness is the only means of being delivered from the clutches of the contaminated material world. So being delivered means being delivered from material covering, being delivered to the loving energy inside us by taking away the material coverings. The contaminated material world is not, the contaminated material world is the covering that's covering the, the material coverings of our spiritual world, the covering of our own soul. So we, in other words, like I said, at the very start of the class, we need to get out of our own way. The contaminated material part of our lives must get away, be cleaned away to be in order to become our pure selves. So we need to be delivered from the clutches, is the word he uses, isn't it? Prabhupada uses the clutches, the grip, the grip like the feet of an eagle on us. It's, it's, a, it's not a grip on our body, it's a grip on our hearts. And when that clutch is taken away, released, our hearts are free to breathe, to love, 
to be open to the other. Prabhupada continues, sometimes unscrupulous commentators, unscrupulous means dishonest and uncareful and reckless. Sometimes unscrupulous commentators distort the meaning of what is clearly stated here, that all devotional service should be offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Unfortunately, unscrupulous commentators divert the mind of the reader to that which is not at all feasible, that which is not possible. But what is the problem here? The problem is that the commentators are commentating with their heads and commentating with their intelligence. They're arguing, they're reasoning, they're using logic. They're not appealing to our hearts. It's through our hearts that we will find our way out of material clutter. It's through our hearts that we'll find the path, the devotional path back to Godhead. And the commentators, they do one thing, they keep us in our minds. They say, think about this. Think about that. What if this? What if that? Which example can we bring for the logical reasoning? And all these things are interesting for our minds, but they divert us, says Prabhupada, from what is actually possible, and not only possible, feasible, but necessary. The path to our constitutional position is not only possible, but necessary. Prabhupada says, such commentators do not know that there is no difference between Krishna's mind and Krishna. Just like there's no difference between Krishna's name and Krishna. What Krishna thinks is Krishna's heart. What Krishna, what's in Krishna's mind is Krishna's emotion, his love, the love, the loving energy of Srimati Radhika. There is no difference between mind and heart. In Krishna, there is no difference between loving devotion and what Krishna communicates to us. Prabhupada continues, Krishna is, no, is not an ordinary human being. He is absolute truth. His body, mind, and he himself are one and absolute we have said that all service goes ultimately to Krishna. This is so, all service goes ultimately to Krishna because all devoted service is ultimately energized by the love of Radharani. And all Radharani's love is destined, targeting Mohan. So devotional service is the service to this greater cycle of love that we talk about, helping, serving the love of Radharani so it finds its way to Mohan, so that the loving relation, the, the, the kunj, lila, can go on and on and on. Again, all love comes from Radharani, all love returns to Radharani in order to support the loving relation of Radha Mohan. That loving relation is the absolute. That loving relation is the heartbeat of the universe. And like the red blood through a heart, love goes in and goes out through the body of the universe, like waves on the ocean of love. And Prabhupada goes on, he says, it is stated, it is stated in the Kurma Purana, 
as it is quoted by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami in his Anubhasya commentary, comments on Chaitanya Tarita Merita, fifth chapter, Adilila, verses 41-48. Sorry, Madhuriya Rasa, for this. He says, Deha Dehi Vibhedo Yam Neshvara Vidyate Kvachita. This means there is no difference in Krishna, the Supreme Lord, between himself and his body. So the spiritual body of Krishna that we see in the Kunj Lila, that we hear about every day in the Kunj Lila, there's no difference between this and Radharani, Radha Mohan itself, him or herself. That is God. The Kunj Lila, the loving relation, the transfer of loving energy is God itself. Prabhupada continues, but because they do not know the science of Krishna, the commentators hide Krishna and divide his personality from his mind and from his body. So they say, here is Krishna, the body, Krishna thinks these thoughts, Krishna has these experiences in his personality. But we understand that they are one. That the feelings, the body, the person, the thoughts, they're all one and they all constitute a living personality, a living and loving personality. Prabhupada goes on, although this is sheer ignorance of the science of Krishna, some men take, make profit out of misleading people. So, and he continues again, there are some who are demonic. They also think of Krishna, but enviously. Just like King, King Kamsa, Krishna's uncle. He was also thinking of Krishna always, but he thought of Krishna as his enemy. This is, of course, thinking of God without any, obviously, without any love, without any loving feeling or, or devotion. And what is the result? Well, Prabhupada continues, the result for Kamsha, King Kamsha, he was always in anxiety, always wondering whether Krishna would come to kill him, always speculating with the brain, learn, knowing nothing in the heart, knowing nothing in his, in his soul, no knowledge of the spiritual kind, only doubt of the material kind. And that kind of thinking does not help us, Jivas. It's a good example of how speculation is useless. We cannot know the future as information, but we can feel the course of the future in our hearts. True knowledge, the kind that King Kamsa would have needed, true knowledge is love, loving knowledge, knowledge of the loving self. And that knowledge, it's not speculating, it's immediate. We feel it immediately. It's who we are. It's our experience of the world. It's immediate. It's immediately um, available. Knowledge of God, of our love, God as love, since we are love, is immediately available. We turn our head and it's there. We don't have to think like years into the future. We close our eyes and it's there. We breathe in oxygen and it's there. God is there because the love of God is there. The only challenge is to understand this, to realize this perfect presence of love. That's what's so difficult for us, to understand it in our hearts, to find the path to it through our, through our practice, our meditations. And Prabhupada continues, one should be thinking of Krishna in devotional love. There you have it. One should be thinking of Krishna in devotional love. That is bhakti. 
one should cultivate the knowledge of Krishna continually, the emotional knowledge, the loving knowledge of Krishna. What is that favorable cultiv cultivation, says Prabhupada? It is to learn from a bona fide teacher, like a guru, of course. Krishna is the supreme, the supreme personality of Godhead. And we have several times explained that his body is not material, but is eternal, blissful knowledge. This kind of talk about Krishna, says Prabhupada, will help one become a devotee. This talk about how Krishna is blissful, emotional, pleasurable. Otherwise, says Prabhupada, understanding Krishna from the wrong source will prove fruitless. In other words, the more we know about the loving pastimes of Krishna, the more we hear them, the more we read them, the more we feel them, the more we will know the truth of Krishna, a truth which is spiritual. Prabhupada says, one should therefore engage his mind in the internal form, the primal form of Krishna, with conviction in the heart that Krishna is the supreme. One should engage himself in worship. What is the primal form of Krishna? Radharani. The primal form of Krishna is Prema Shakti, loving energy. So the path to God is this path towards the perfection of love. Very difficult. We all know this, we devotees. But we stay on this path, we become certain in this path. Prabhupada says, there are hundreds of thousands of temples in India for the worship of Krishna. And devotional service is practiced there. When such practice is made, one has to offer obeisances to Krishna. One should lower his head before the deity and engage his mind, his body his activities, everything that will be, that will make one fully absorbed in Krishna without deviation. This means engage mind, body in the loving devotion of Krishna. Fully absorbed means absorbed in our hearts. Intelligence is never absorbed. Intelligence is facts. They absorb in nothing. They bounce off they bounce off things like water off a roof, like rain off a roof. But emotions are absorbed. They flow in and out and about and around. And that's why we associate with guru and devotees to build confidence in that love, confidence in the, in the meaning of our love, the divinity of our own love. We associate with guru to realize our love. And to do this, we take service of Radharani and we come closer and closer to her experience of love uh, through the role of Guru in Guru, Guru Manchari and in Manchari Bhav. This will help us, says Mahaprabhu, this will help one to transfer to Krishna Loka. One should not be deviated by unscrupulous commentators. One must engage in the nine processes of devotional service, beginning with hearing and chanting about Krishna. Pure devotional service is the highest achievement of human society. Both. Pure devotional service is the highest achievement of human society. Imagine a human society full, fully absorbed in devotional service. Prabhupada continues, in the seventh and eighth chapters of Bhagavad Gita, 
pure devotional service to the Lord has been explained. Apart from the yoga of knowledge and mystic yoga or fruitive, fruitive, fruitive activities. So everything but those things have been explained. What you said before. Jnana, yoga, and karma. Karma yoga. So, so this uh, pure devotional side, pure bhakti, is completely different from jnana or jnana yoga or uh, mystic yoga and also karma or karma yoga. So this is uh, this Prabhupada explained. Yeah. And this is what comes in chapters 7 and 8. And this is exactly why Gurudev instructed me to begin with chapter 9, wow. with bhakti, wow. with bhakti, of course. Wow. Yes. Prabhupada says, and we finish now soon, there is a beautiful poem about Krishna in which it is clearly stated that any person who is engaged in the worship of demigods is most unintelligent and cannot achieve at any time the supreme award of Krishna. The supreme award of Krishna is, of course, prema, divine love, through Radharani. Prabhupada says, the devotee, in the beginning, may sometimes fall from the standard, but still, he should be considered superior to other philosophers and yogis. Just like you were saying before, Kamachan, that already as a devotee, you're, you're advanced. You're already on the first step to the path. Prabhupada continues, one who always engages in Krishna consciousness should be understood to be the perfect saintly person. One who engages in Krishna consciousness should be understood to be the perfect saintly person. His accidental non-devotional activities will diminish. Like Gurudev always says, automatically, naturally, do not force it. Forcing it is not loving. Forcing your devotion is non-devotional. Time will come and your, your path will advance automatically. Your devotion your practice will advance as it should. And, says Prabhupada, he will soon be situated without any doubt in complete perfection. So the experience of doubt, of course, is common for most of us, I think. And it's probably the most difficult to, to stop it. And what's worse? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, so this is a little bit difficult. So, Gurudev said, uh, now, Ishta Nishta, Swarupa Nishta, and Guru Nishta. So, from beginning, so we may take shelter of Gurudev, but still we have material body, material consciousness. So, we may have some doubt, Gurudev. But some or other, by good fortune, by the master Guru Dev, we have an Ishta Nishta. Then we can have, we, are, we have a spiritual body and Swarupa. Mm -hmm. Then, then 100% Guru Dev, is, Guru Dev has a spiritual body. Guru Dev is Swarupa, we could understand. Then, no doubt is that. So, in in that, before that, we have still material consciousness. At that time, we may have some doubt. We may not fully surrender to the Guru Dev. But this mentions without any doubt. Mm. So this is completely spiritually situated. So this is the Prabhupada saying. This is, so, and then, 
Uh, so soon, he will be or she will be situated without any doubt in complete perfection. Who, what is complete perfection? This is what it persists. According to page four of the Bible. Constitutional position. Yes. Constitutional position. That is when doubt is extinguished. Very good. So one last sentence from Prabhupada, which goes very well with what Jainanda Maharaj just said. <laughs> the pure devotee has no actual chance to fall down because the Supreme Godhead personally, with love, takes care of his pure devotees. Therefore, the intelligent person should take directly to this process of Krishna consciousness and happily live in this material world. He will eventually receive the supreme award of Krishna. Yeah. Jai Shri Radhe. Oh, wait, just let me change microphone. So this is, I want to comment, sorry. Intelligent, intelligent person should take directly to the process of Krishna consciousness. So this Krishna consciousness, I want to interpret rather than. And also, last sentence, he will eventually receive the supreme abode of Krishna. What is supreme abode of Krishna? Yes, this once we assign Krishna, Krishna bring us to the Radharani. So and this is this is supreme award of Krishna for us, the service of Radharani. Mm -hmm. And also another fun comment. Before I could not realize, but this was actually I'm thinking this describe Radharani, Kunja. You mentioned it, you know, you know, say who is engaged mind always thinking of Krishna? Who is offering you know obeisance and uh, worship to Krishna? Because you know, someone who worship most mostly is Radhika. And uh, who is completely observing me, observing Krishna? That is Radharani. Yeah. And then surely you will come to me. This means Krishna's. Krishna's kunja. So this this bus, like if we read Radharasa Bilaks Manjari, so Radharani go to meet Krishna. It's talking, yeah. but talking to Radharani. Yeah, talking Radharani, or Krishna talking Radharani. Uh, actually, you uh, know. I also want to add in the in same mood. Uh, the end of Bhagavad Gita is repeat, repeating in 18 chapter, repeating the man's conclusion. Yeah. And this um, instruction of Krishna, engage your mind always in thinking of me, manmana, mm. in, in this law, in thinking of me, is the main, the best uh, instruction. That is why it's repeated at the end. 1865, Man Bhava Man it's a game. And then 66 coming. If you couldn't do this, just take shelter of Mam. Sarvadharman Parityajama Ekam Sharanraja. If you couldn't do this, then Mam. In this world, Mam, we can hear, we can see here again, again, and again, four times. Because these two words is connected, 65 and 66. It's, it's like one, one big instruction Krishna is given. If you couldn't do this, do this. If you couldn't do this, do this. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't think about mom, it's about my radha, it's not just take shelter of her. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. We stop here.